Hi there. It is Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Where are you? What are you doing? It's about 6.40 p.m. We're waiting here in North Carolina for the polls to close in a bit. Um, I've been hearing all kinds of things all day long about disturbances, about um, people who are excited that they were able to vote, about whether or not there were long lines or short lines. Um, and I just have a question for you. After today, what's next? What are you going to do next? What have you learned from this place? What have you learned from this election? If you're like me, I've been voting since I was, or I've been voting since I was 18. I don't think I've missed a single election. Um, I hope I have not missed a single election. Not national, not local. Um, not at school, if I was in college, not um, at work, because voting is a right that I am not about to give up. But I also know that after I vote, the next day comes and I have to have a plan to move forward. Do you have a plan to move forward? If, after the results of the election, regardless of which election, do you have a plan to move forward? Or are you going to sit and wait for another four years and complain? Move forward. You have an opinion. You are a citizen. You have a right to express your opinion and your viewpoint. You have a right to know what goes on, not only in your federal government, but in your state and local governments. Those are the places that make the most difference in your life. And you have the right to know what's going on. And not only do you have the right to know, you have the right to be involved. People died for your rights. People died for your rights. And I'm not talking about black people. I'm not talking about white people. I'm talking about people died for your rights. Some of them died to your rights. And so I want you to take this opportunity to commit to yourself and to the community that you live in that you will be engaged. I know we get busy, we've got work, we've got school, we've got kids, we've got parents, but there are things in our communities that we need to be engaged in. We need to know what's going on. And just in the community engagement that I've done, just here in the city of Raleigh, I don't know what it's like in a smaller town, but I'm sure it's just as busy. There are too many things for one person to keep up with. So engage with others in your community. Somebody decide that they want to follow this meeting. Somebody decide they want to follow that thing. Somebody decide they want to keep up with what's going on on their block, on their street. Somebody determine you want to keep up with what's going on in your neighborhood. We can't depend on other people to take care of us. We have to do it for us. And so I encourage you today, make the commitment. Tell me down in the notes, in the comments, what is your next step going to be? What is your next step going to be? Is your next step going to get in, be getting, if you've got kids, getting involved in PTA? These things are still going on virtually. Are you going to make sure that you're involved with something at your church or your mosque or your synagogue? Are you going to make sure that you reach out and check on one of your elderly neighbors that can't get out and do things for themselves? Are you just going to make phone calls? Can you call somebody in your community three or four times a month? You know, once a week. Can you pick out one person to call and check on and say, neighbor, this is so-and-so. Um, I'm getting ready to go to the grocery store. Is there anything I can do for you? Become involved. Civic engagement, community engagement is not always about government. It's about engaging in your community. And there are still ways to do that with safe distancing, with um, telephone calls, with dropping something off on somebody's porch or picking up something off of somebody's porch. And find a way to do it and be a friend and be a neighbor. Don't complain about everything. But then on the other side, don't look uh, or try to make sure that you're not doing things that people complain about. 
Think about somebody other than yourself. Continue to move forward. Move forward. Don't stop and sit. Regardless of what happens in this election, whether it's what you wanted to see happen or whether it's not, you still live here. You're still a citizen. You're still engaged. Be engaged. And for somebody else who can't be as engaged as you can, reach out a hand and help them. Um, that goes for civil rights. That goes for mom's rights. That goes for dad's taking the kids for a day so mom can have a breathing spell. That goes for shopping for yourself or for your neighbors. Sometimes that goes, that means bulk shopping. Find out where you can go buy things in bulk. And for people who are having a struggle, they might be able to help purchase in bulk because it's cheaper, but they can't buy the whole bulk thing themselves. See what you can do to help somebody who's near you or in your neighborhood or in your city or in your state or in your country. We all have an obligation to help one another because that's why we were put here. We were put here to take care of us. We were put here to help take care of one another. And so I look forward to continuing to engage with you, and I will. And I look forward to continuing to bring race forward before you because it needs to come out. And I look forward to helping you make an equitable um, place to live if you live here in the city of Raleigh, the county of Wake, the state of North Carolina. I love, love, love the fact that we have these times shared together and I'm looking forward to seeing some of your comments um, in, in the comments section and see what you're thinking about doing for your next step and what your commitment is going to be. Thanks so much for joining me. And um, if you've got some things you need me to help you follow up on, let me know what they are. And if I can't do them, I'll see if I can find somebody to help you. Take care, and I'll, I hope I talk to you tomorrow. That's my goal. Bye.